Hi, we're back with module 11, this time 11B, pages 358 through 362, continuing our discussion of solubility. Hey, quiet in the kitchen. A very loud potato, loud potato chip bag was happening. Okay, so this video, I must warn you, is a lot of just writing out sentences and explanations again, which may tend to get a little boring. So in the interest of that, I decided not to do my hair because I didn't really feel like doing my hair, and then I thought, hey, maybe it'll keep things interesting today during the video. So anyway, I just kind of did some finger combing and it'll be fine, right? All right, let's get into it. The solute and solvent molecules must be attracted to each other in order for the solute to dissolve. Now we kind of talked about this in the previous video, 11a. Polar molecules are gonna be attracted to other polar molecules because they each have negative and positive charges that are then attracted to the opposite electrical charge okay so polar would dissolve polar so like dissolves like and nonpolar um, molecules would be attracted to other nonpolar molecules okay so that's what i mean by like dissolves like polars go together and nonpolars go together and the solute and the solvent have to be attracted to one another for the dissolving to occur all right, and I also want to uh, alert you to, or direct you to, table 11.1. Um, you might want to take your own notes on table 11.1 so that you have them in your notes, but I'm not going to write it all out for you word for word. I think you can do that yourselves, but it will show you um, how solid or liquid or gas solutes dissolve in liquid solvents. Okay, real briefly, I will just mention, mention that a solid being dissolved in a liquid, remember, think of a solid as being tightly packed together, so when it dissolves in a liquid, those atoms and molecules have to separate from one another and there needs to be more space um, in between them. So they want to separate. In a liquid solute going into a liquid solvent, um, the space between the molecules will maybe grow a little bit more, but it's already starting out as a liquid, so it's not like a tightly packed um, solid. But the interesting one here is a gas. If you have a gas solute, a gas takes up the most amount of space, right? Because its molecules are the farthest apart from each other. They're moving around, they're needing space. But when you try to dissolve a gas in a liquid, you actually have to bring those gas molecules together, kind of cram them together a little bit more so that they'll stay in the liquid form and be dissolved in the liquid. So when you open a can of pop, those gas molecules are like, yay, we get to escape and the gas molecules get to spread out a little bit more. But when they're dissolved in the liquid, in your delicious Diet Coke or whatever your drink may be, then they're brought closer together. So take a look at that table, it will explain that to you. All right, moving on. Now for the definition of solubility. Solubility. Solubility is the maximum amount of solute the maximum amount of solute that can dissolve in a given amount of solvent. The maximum amount of solute that can dissolve in a given amount of solvent. Okay, solubility is measured in grams of solute, quiet in the kitchen, sorry about that, that will dissolve in 100 Point zero grams of solvent. Okay, that is how it's measured. Okay, so for example, we'll switch colors here just to keep things interesting also along with my crazy hair. Um, 
Okay, so for example, NaCl, our favorite table salt, has a solubility of 37 grams per 100 in water. Okay, so in 100 grams of water, you can dissolve 37 grams of table salt before the salt will just, it's reached its maximum solubility, no more will dissolve. Okay, compared to baking soda, baking soda is NaHCO3, has a solubility of 12 grams per 100 in water. Okay, so that's an example of how solubility is measured and how you talk about it. So, you can see which one is more soluble. NaCl is more soluble than NaHCO3 in water. Okay, you can have other solvents besides water, of course. You don't just have to have water. But this time we're talking about water. Oh, I wrote that in your notes. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, solubilities depend on the solvent too. Okay, so it also matters what you're trying to dissolve it into. If you're trying to dissolve table salt into, say, orange juice, the solubility is going to be different. I don't actually know if it's more or less than water. I'm gonna say maybe less than water. Okay, let's erase this and move on. Oh, actually I'm gonna give you one more rule down here. This is called a sol one of the solubility rules. Um, there will be three of them. The solubility, the solubility of any solute of any solute depends on both the identity of the solute and the identity of the solvent. Okay, so just like I was saying. If you're talking about the solubility of salt, you also have to um, know what you're dissolving it into, what the solvent is. All right, now we shall move on. I will quickly erase this for some more discussion of solubility. As much as we can get in in our 15 minutes together that YouTube allows me. Saturated solution. Let's go back to our blue marker, shall we? A saturated solution. Do you know what that means? Can you guess? A saturated solution is a solution in which The maximum amount of solute has been dissolved. We say that solution is saturated. Okay, so in the example of table salt and water, we said that the solubility of table salt was 37 grams per 100 in water. So a saturated solution of table salt would actually have 100 grams of water and the full 37 grams of salt. No more can dissolve in it, so it's called saturated. Another term you need to know, precipitation. Just like in the weather. So what is precipitation? 
Precipitation is the process by which the maximum amount, oh no, I was looking at the wrong line. That's not right. Oh no. Were you wondering why I was writing the exact same thing? <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't until it was too late, but now I realized. So let's try that again. Precipitation is also a process. Process by which the solid solute leaves a solution and turns back into its solid phase. Okay, so again, thinking of a solution of salt water, um, if there is too much salt in the water, then you will see, eh, actually you've had, you've had the salt, it's been dissolved in the water, but then let's say, and this is one of the experiments that we're going to perform, but then let's say you put that table, that uh, salt water into the freezer, you lower the temperature of it, some of the salt will actually leave the salt water solution and it will form back into salt crystals and it'll fall to the bottom of the glass. So then you get your glass out of the freezer and you would see salt on the bottom of the glass again. So you can kind of think of it, well, you can exactly think of it just like precipitation in the clouds. When the snow or the rain leaves the clouds and it falls down to the earth, it's leaving whatever solution it was in in the clouds. So that's precipitation. Now, the other solubility rules to finish up our video for today. Okay, for solid solutes, solubility increases with increasing temperatures. Okay, so my arrows here mean increases or increasing. For solid solutes, their solubility increase with increasing temperature. So if you have hot water, you're going to be able to dissolve more hot cocoa crystals in it. If you have cold water, it's not going to be as soluble. You won't be able to dissolve as many hot cocoa crystals in it. Okay, continuing on. For liquid, and again, my little quotes here mean bring the same word down. Okay, so for liquid solutes, comma, solubility is not affected by temperature. So this solubility rule is all about temperature and how it affects the solubilities of things. And then lastly, for gas solutes, solubility decreases with increasing temperature, okay? So as the temperature increases, the solubility of a gas decreases. So think about your can of pop. If you leave a can of pop out in the hot sun, the gas in your carbonated pop is not going to stay dissolved in your Diet Coke. It's going to escape and your Diet Coke is going to get flat faster than if you had an open can of Diet Coke and you put it in the refrigerator. The lower temperatures help the gas stay dissolved um, and leads to better solubility. Okay, we're gonna have to stop right there and Next time, I will give you the last of the solubility rules.